bass excitation. To do this, we attach a simple spring mass system to our harmonic oscillator using a string. The harmonic oscillator will prescribe the position at the top of the spring in a sinusoidal fashion. We are interested in how the system's response changes relative to the driving frequency of the harmonic oscillator. Thus, we will examine the system response below, above, and at the natural frequency to determine the distinct characteristics of each case. Let's figure out how the system should respond at various frequencies. As with all vibrations problems, we start by examining the free body diagram to derive the equation of motion. We notice that the only forces on the mass will come from the spring and gravity. In order to eliminate gravity from our equation of motion, we transform our x values into z values, which are offset from x by the equilibrium displacement. We will examine the particular solution as it should produce the largest effect. In the end, the particular solution will have an amplitude dependent on the ratio of the driven frequency to the natural frequency. We expect the response amplitude to asymptotically approach infinity as the driven frequency approaches the natural frequency. As the ratio approaches zero, the response amplitude will approach the driving amplitude. And as the ratio approaches infinity, the response amplitude should approach zero. First we will find the natural frequency of the system. To do this, I set the spring into motion and measure its response with the ultrasound sensor below. Then I do a sinusoidal curve fit on the graph in order to find the natural frequency. For the remainder of the video, we will excite the system below, above, and at the natural frequency to give an idea of the physical response. In this test, we drive the oscillator below the natural frequency. Notice that the top of the spring and the mass reach their maximum and minimum height at the same time. They are thus in phase, as can be predicted by the positive amplitude in the particular solution. Next, the system is driven above the natural frequency. Notice the spring seems to expand and contract, as the two ends are 180 degrees out of phase, as predicted by the negative amplitude in the particular solution. Finally, we will excite the system at the natural frequency. It's much harder to see, but the top of the spring and the mass are 90 degrees out of phase. Notice that the amplitude is very large and continues to increase. At a point, however, the spring compresses fully and it cannot gain a significant amount of amplitude. This assures that the amplitude will never actually reach the predicted value of infinity. <laughs>